The Padawan Bites the Dust. I'm not sure at what point that night Augie had cut off his Padawan braid, or why that made me really mad. I had always found his obsession with everything Star Wars kind of geeky, and that braid in the back of his hair, with its little beads, was just awful. But he had always been so proud of it, of how long it took him to grow it, of how he had chosen the beads himself in a craft store in Soho. He and Christopher, his best friend, used to play with lightsabers and Star Wars stuff whenever they got together, and they had both started growing their braids at the same time. When August cut his braid off that night, without an explanation, without telling me beforehand, which was surprising, or even calling Christopher, I was just so upset, I can't even explain why. I've seen Augie brushing his hair in the bathroom mirror. He meticulously tries to get every hair in place. He tilts his head to look at himself from different angles, like there's some magic perspective inside the mirror that could change the dimensions of his face. Mom knocked on my door after dinner. She looked drained, and I realized that between me and Augie, today had been a tough day for her, too. So you want me to... So you want to tell me what's up, she said nicely, softly. Not now, okay, I answered. I was reading. I was tired. Maybe later I'd be up to telling her about Miranda, but not now. I'll check in before you go to bed, she said. And then she came over and kissed me on the top of my head. Can Daisy sleep with me tonight? Sure, I'll bring her in later. Don't forget to come back, I said as she left. I promise. But she didn't come back that night. Dad did. He told me Augie had had a bad first day, and Mom was helping him through it. He asked me how my day had gone, and I told him, fine. He said he didn't believe me for a second, and I told him Miranda and Ella were acting like jerks. I said nothing tests, he said nothing tests friendship like high school, and then proceeded to poke fun at the fact that I was reading War and Peace. Not real fun, of course, since I'd heard him brag to people that he had a 15-year-old daughter who was reading Tolstoy. But he liked to rib me about where I was in the book, in a war part or in a peace part, and if there was anything in there about Napoleon's day as a hip-hop dancer. It was silly stuff, but Dad always managed to make everyone laugh, and sometimes that's all you need to feel better. Don't be mad at Mom, he said as he bent down to give me a goodnight kiss. You know how much she worries about Augie. I know, I acknowledged. Want the light on or off? It's getting kind of late, he said, pausing by the light switch at the door. Can you bring Daisy in first? Two seconds later, he came back with Daisy dangling in his arms, and he laid her down next to me on the bed. Good night, sweetheart, he said, kissing my forehead. He kissed Daisy's on her forehead, too. Good night, girly. Sweet dreams. An apparition at the door. Once I got up in the middle of the night because I was thirsty, and I saw Mom standing outside Augie's room. Her hand was on the doorknob, her forehead leaning on the door which was ajar. She wasn't going in his room or stepping out, just standing right outside the door, as if she was listening to the sound of his breathing as he slept. The hallway lights were out. The only thing illuminating her was the blue nightlight in August's bedroom. She looked ghost-like standing there, or maybe I should say angelic. I tried to walk back into my room without disturbing her, but she heard me and walked over to me. Is Augie okay? I asked. I knew that sometimes he would wake up choking on his own saliva if he accidentally turned over on his back. Oh, he's fine, she said, wrapping her arms around me. She walked me back into my room, pulled the covers over me, and kissed me goodnight. She never explained what she was doing outside his door, and I never asked. I wonder how many nights she stood outside his door, and I wondered if she ever stood outside my door like that. Breakfast 
Can you pick me up from school today? I said the next morning, smearing some cream cheese on my bagel. Mom was making August's lunch. American cheese on whole wheat bread, soft enough for Augie to eat, while August sat eating oatmeal at the table. Dad was getting ready to go to work. Now that I was in high school, the new schedule, the new school routine was going to be that Dad and I would take the subway together in the morning, which meant his having to leave 15 minutes earlier than usual, then get off at my stop, and he'd keep going. And Mom was going to pick me up after school in the car. I was going to call Miranda's mother to see if she could drive you home again, Mom answered. No, Mom, I said quickly. You pick me up, or I'll just take the subway. You know I don't want you to take the subway by yourself yet, she answered. Mom, I'm 15. Everybody my age takes the subway by themselves. She can take the subway home, said Dad from the other room, adjusting his tie as he stepped into the kitchen. Why can't Miranda's mother just pick her up again? Mom argued with him. She's old enough to take the subway by herself, Dad insisted. Mom looked at both of us. Is something going on? She didn't address her question to either one of us in particular. You would know if you'd come back to check on me, I said spitefully, like you said you would. Oh, God, Via, said Mom, remembering now how she had completely ditched me last night. She put down the knife she was using to cut Augie's grapes in half, still a choking hazard for him because of the size of his palate. I am so sorry. I fell asleep in Augie's room. By the time I woke up, I know, I know, I nodded indifferently. Mom came over, put her hands on my cheeks, and lifted my face to look at her. I really, really sorry, she whispered. I could tell she was. It's okay, I said. Via, Mom, it's fine. This time I meant it. She looked so genuinely sorry, I just wanted to let her off the hook. She kissed and hugged me, then returned to the grapes. So, is something going on with Miranda, she asked. Just that she's acting like a complete jerk, I said. Miranda's not a jerk, Augie quickly chimed in. She can be, I yelled. Believe me. Okay, then, I'll pick you up, no problem, Mom said, decisively swiping the half grapes into a snack bag with the side of her knife. That was the plan all along, anyway. I'll pick Augie up from school in the car, and then we'll pick you up. We'll probably get there about quarter to four. No, I said firmly, before she had even finished. Isabel, she can take the subway, said Dad impatiently. She's a big girl now. She's reading War and Peace for crying out loud. What does War and Peace have to do with anything, answered Mom, clearly annoyed. It means you don't have to pick her up in the car like she's a little girl, he said sternly. Via, are you ready? Get your bag and let's go. I'm ready, I said, pulling on my backpack. Bye, Mom. Bye, Augie. I kissed them both quickly and headed toward the door. Do you even have a Metro card? Mom said after me. Of course she has a Metro card, answered Dad, fully exasperated. Yes, Mama. Stop worrying so much. Bye, he said, kissing her on the cheek. Bye, big boy, he said to August, kissing him on the top of his head. I'm proud of you. Have a good day. Bye, Daddy. You too. Dad and I jogged down the stoop stairs and headed down this block. Call me after school before you get on the subway, Mom yelled at me from the window. I didn't even turn around but waved my hand at her so she knew I heard her. Dad did turn around, walking backwards for a few steps. War and peace, Isabel, he called out, smiling as he pointed at me. War and peace.